There are only two types of series where we can actually find the sum. We know a geometric series is one of the few series where we can actually give an explicit formula, the sum equals a over 1 minus r. A collapsing series is the second type of series where we can actually find the exact sum. So here's what a collapsing series looks like. Let's generate the first few terms. So you get the idea of what we mean by collapsing. And so we're going to start with k equal 1. And so we have 1 plus 2, 1 plus 3. There's the first term. And then the second term would be 1 over 2 plus 2 and 2 plus 3. And then the third term would be 1 over 3 plus 2 and 3 plus 3. We could find values for these. We'll keep going. The kth term, which they've actually given us akin to the nth term, but in terms of k. So we talk, call it the kth term. And this is an infinite series, so the sum continues to go on and on and on. So let's clean this up a bit. We have 1 over 3 times 4 <clears throat> plus 1 over 4 times 5 plus 1 over 5 times 6 and then so on. So we have a collapsing series and so we could even say this is one-third times one-fourth and then we could say that this was one-fourth times one-fifth and so on. It's not clear that we are actually going to collapse here but what is clear is that each of these terms, here's the first term and here's the second term in our kth term, that they share a common value based on k. So what we're going to do when we have something that is of this form that appears like it could be a collapsing series is we're going to use some algebra on it. And what we're going to do in this form, it's difficult to recognize A collapsing series. So one technique we're going to do is we're going to use partial fraction decomp and change the kth term or the nth term and then generate the terms and it should be easier for us to see that this is a collapsing series. So let's do this. We're going to have a over k plus 2 plus b over k plus 3 and that has to equal this, right? So we have a times k plus 3 plus b times k plus 2, and that has to equal 1. Well, I'm going to substitute in k equal negative 3. That forces my a term to go to 0. Here, negative 3 plus 2 is just negative 1, so negative b equals 1, so b is negative 1. And I'm going to substitute in k equal negative 2. That's going to force my b term to go to 0. So here, negative 2 plus 3 is positive 1a equals 1. So I can take, using partial fraction decomp, this kth term and equivalently write it as 1 over k plus 2 minus 1 over k plus 3. That is algebraically equivalent. And so I'm going to use that. The kth term can equivalently be written in this form. And algebraically we proved that. 
So now let's generate the first few terms starting at k equals 1. And 1 plus 2 is 3, so that's 1 third. 1 plus 3 is 4, so that's 1 fourth. There's the first term. The second term where k equals 2 is 1 fourth minus 1 fifth. The third term, where k equals 3, is 1 fifth minus 1 sixth. And we would keep going to the kth term, k plus 2 minus 1 over k plus 3. And we recognize it continues to go. And in this form, it's much easier to see why we call this a collapsing series because this minus one-fourth and that plus one-fourth have a sum of zero. This minus one-fifth and plus one-fifth have a sum to zero. Now, I didn't show all of those infinitely many terms in there up to the kth term, but I can see a pattern that this minus one-sixth will cancel with a plus one-sixth that's going to be in that next term. And I know that that is going to continue, that trend is going to continue, and that there's going to be some term here that's going to cancel with that term. And so what I'm going to be left with is I'm going to be left with a sum of one-third minus one over k plus three. And that is the actual sum. We might call that the kth partial sum. And remember from our geometric work that now we're talking about a series. The series of partial sums, if I put that kth term in there, then the result of this sequence here, this is the, the kth term in the sequence, I should say. And so I know that all I have to do is determine what that kth term is doing as k tends toward infinity. And that's going to be the actual sum of my series. And so as k goes to infinity, that term goes to 0. So the actual sum of this collapsing series is 1 third. And since I have an actual sum, since that didn't go to infinity or is a limit that I cannot define and say that it does not exist, this series converges and converges to a value of 1 third. So collapsing series are something that we will occasionally see on the exam. We don't see them super often, but we will occasionally see collapsing series. And I wanted you to know that it won't always be the subtraction of two terms. Sometimes you may have to do partial fraction decomp and put it in a form where you could actually find the sum, generate some terms, see what kind of pattern is going on and canceling your terms. Now here is a collapsing series that's actually a fraction minus a fraction. And that's what we're going to look for when you see a fraction minus a fraction. That is a big clue that you are looking at a collapsing series. So look for that. If you can determine you have a collapsing series, then what you want to do is you want to do your best to get that nth partial sum. Or here, since we're in terms of k, I'm going to call it the kth partial sum. And the way you can do that is to generate enough terms where you see a pattern of what's canceling. So here, be careful. We don't start at k equal 1, we start at k equal 2. So the first term is 1 half minus 1 over 2 minus 1, so that's minus 1. The second term, where k equals 3, is 1 third minus 1 over 3 minus 1, or minus 1 half. I'll generate some more terms here, where k equals 4 is 1 fourth minus 1 third. And we go all the way down and 
we do need to write that we recognize this is an infinite series that it's going to just keep going and going and going and going. And now we're looking for the pattern of how things cancel because that's going to determine what's happening here and most importantly which one of those terms gets canceled. It's not always going to be the last one cancels with the very next one like before this one canceled with that one and we can clearly see that's not what's happening here. Here this positive one half cancels with that negative one half. This positive one-third cancels with the second one over here, the negative one-third. The first one in that sum is going to cancel with the second one over here. There's going to be some first one over here that's going to cancel with the second one there. And so the kth partial sum for us is going to look like negative one, that one never canceled with anything, plus 1 over k. And we're going to plop that in the limit because now we're dealing with a sequence of partial sums. And so whatever that last term in the sequence is doing tells us what our series is doing. So negative 1 plus 1 over k, as k tends toward infinity, that term tends toward 0. So this collapsing series converges and converges to a value of 1. So this is a collapsing series that converges to negative 1. All right, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time. We're not going to see a whole lot more collapsing series. I will be really honest with you. I've used this as an example because this particular collapsing series I've seen on several prior tests. So just make sure that the process that you use is to generate enough terms to see which of these two terms is going to cancel. Make sure that you carry with you all the information from the first few terms that didn't cancel. Find your nth partial sum and then plug that into a limit as n goes to infinity and that's going to be the sum of your series. Alright, so come to class next time and we'll do some homework problems on collapsing series.